my iPad today because I'm going to show you how I make videos. Now, I'm my good camera is in use to film a video. This is actually my re-review of the Platinum 3776. I'm going to take you through it from beginning to end, but I'll edit out, you know, the boring parts. So this is the setup I use. I have a camera. It's an older Canon. It's a Canon 5D Mark II. Uh, They're up to the Mark III. I got this at a very large discount because it was discontinued at the time. Uh, this is where I do my writing samples. Oh, by the way, the microphone helped a lot, but it's just a cheapy. Uh, it still has that hissing, which I haven't figured out how to deal with yet. Movo something or other. Um, document camera. It is uh, an IPVO document camera. I, one of the things I've run into is that sometimes it'll... Uh, the video file will be corrupted, and then I have to redo the review. And then, of course, my Mac. It is hooked to the IPVO. I used to hook up my regular Canon camera to it, and then I could watch myself make sure I was in focus. But I've lately redone the format of my review, so I mix and match from both cameras. And I can only hook one up because the IPVO software crashes. <laughs> and then I have my notebook here. And, you know, it's an Apica notebook where I do my writing samples. And, yes, I've had to redo some reviews because, like I said, I have trouble. And then behind it all is the bookshelf. I position my chair carefully so I know that when my back is against the back of the chair, I'm in focus. And, uh, you know, just random books. And then I put ink on the top shelf to give myself a fountain penny background. There is ink in the reddish metal case, or, I'm sorry, the reddish wooden case. The other wooden case, there's nothing in it right now, but something for the future. And this lamp has absolutely... Oops! And there was canning behind me that... I'm canning some stuff from my garden. Uh, there was canning behind me and I just kicked it. But anyway, this is uh, nothing to do with it. I just use it to read because I have a couch. Uh, if you're curious, on this shelf here... Not the best lit, I am really sorry. But I have a lot of different kinds of ink. These are sort of my... Well, okay. The Pilot actually has Noodler's Black in it, which is my favorite ink uh, that I use the most. These are kind of my second tier inks that I don't eat, like as much, but don't hate. Uh, so I use them occasionally. My favorite ink, so I'm going to stand on that chair you saw. My favorite inks are all in this metal, or this wooden box. A lot of Noodlers, a lot of Deatramentus, a little bit of Diamine, uh, actually just one bottle. I have my Lamy ink. Oh, what is that? Yamabudo, I think. Anyway, you get the idea. So that's what's always behind me. And, oh yeah, that's some legal stuff. Alright, and trying to not drop anything. So, that is where I do my filming. Now let's take a look at how I do my editing, because that is even more important. Oh, by the way, before I do that, I have light coming in there. Yes, there is no trim around those windows. That's a project coming. And I have light through this window. So I have all kinds, and you've seen that view before, just not from this side. So I have all kinds of light that comes in, so I can definitely get a good light from two directions with this. That's an east-facing window, and, I have, and the others were south-facing. So now let's look at the editing. By the way, when I make, do my photographs, I use this, the, the table that I do my writing. Sorry. I'll try that again. When I do my uh, photographs and close-ups, what I do is I use the table that you... Oh yeah, there you see my bedroom door also needs trim. And my front door. Yick! <laughs> but anyway, you, you can see I, uh, I'll use this east window here. I do it early in the morning and I, and I photograph it right down the level of the table I do my writing sample on. And with the morning sun coming in really bright, that makes the background really black, gives good shadows, good contrast. And as a result, I can get pretty decent photographs. And this iPad actually does a pretty good job getting close up. Now, I know some of you are going to say, well, why don't you use a macro lens? Well, there is a good reason why I don't use a macro lens. They cost 
more than I want to pay right now just for that particular purpose. Um, my luxury money is going to stuff like that because there will be trim on that before the summer is over. <laughs> and that's where I want to spend my money this year. So I hope that was interesting and now let's take a look at the editing. Well I'm using iMovie. I import all my clips into iMovie and I edit them there. It's, it's free software. It comes with your Apple computer. I'm going to point out I have four <coughs> clips here. Uh, two of these are me speaking. One is actually a future video. The other one is the current video, the Shoji. Uh, and then I have two writing samples. One again is a future movie and the other one is the Shoji. I've already imported them into... Oops, I just kicked the computer. I already imported them into uh, iMovie and I started the process of a movie. And you'll notice down at the bottom uh, the waveforms on this are not lined up, because check this out. I don't know how well you hear this, but let's just try anyway. Hello. I've had some equipment issues. I want to record a video. Hello. I've had some... See, they're, they're not lined up. So the first thing I need to do is line these up. Now, if you make your clips too small, you can't see it. So I like to have my clips big enough, so then my words actually match my uh, actions. So let's see if we can line this up. And again, I don't know how well you can hear this, but at least you can see it. Hello. I've had some... Okay, see, now to my ear, it's all lined up. And then that's good enough. I mean, it doesn't have to be exact. I'm not filming an actual movie like a Hollywood thing or, not, or something. I'm just filming a little pen review and I'm only going to take the audio from one source, and I don't have to worry about my lips matching the words, uh, so I won't look like a dubbed foreign film or something. Dubbed, by the way, is what I said there. <laughs> okay, so uh, when I talk, when I film these, my goal is to get around five minutes. Now, if I'm a little over, it's okay. If I'm a little under, it's okay. If it's a vintage pen, I do allow myself to go longer, and if it's rodeo, I let myself go longer. And as you can see here, 10 minutes, 39 seconds. So I need to do some editing. So uh, what I like to do is I go through and I watch the video. Uh, and then just kind of make a mental note of what I want to chop. So I'm going to press stop now. I'm going to do that process. And then I'll talk about the process of chopping. So now I'm ready to start cutting. Now I'm not going to show you all my cuts because it will take you forever. But, again, my goal is to keep these reviews about five minutes, because that's what I do. Short reviews. Uh, so, I babble a lot. Uh, you'll, if you were to watch the whole 10 minutes and 39 seconds of this, you'll have me repeating lines. You'll hear me talk about the converter and the platinum quite a bit. Uh, you'll hear me messing with the focus. You'll hear me saying clever comments about how, oh yeah, I teach math and science, and this particular thing reminds me of this thing, and, you know, off the subject. So I have to edit all that out. Now, one nice thing is, you know, since I do have to edit all this stuff out, sometimes I have in actually useful, interesting com content. It just doesn't fit in the five-minute format. I can throw all that stuff into my blog. And I'll have to talk to you about my blog sometime. Uh, but now you can see why I have everything lined up. So I'm going to go through the whole video. Video, Wow, and I'm saying gonna like, like I don't know how to talk. I'm going to go through the whole video and do all my cutting and editing, and then I'll come back, and we'll talk about what I do next. So, first thing that needs to be cut, I have two introductions here, so I'm going to cut one of them, and here's how I do it. Uh, first, find the spot. Well, hello. Okay. Well, hello. A little bit further back than that, I guess. Right there. Now, I need to make sure both clips are highlighted. And by the way, you'll notice that the writing sample is above the other one. That's because I'm going to do a lot of cutaways to the writing sample. And then in other parts, I might do a side-by-side. -side. Uh, I might do a picture-in-picture. -picture. Uh, that's also why you'll notice that I sit to one side, because then I can put my writing and stuff over top of that blank side where the lamp is in my picture. Um, I Actually, if this was a real studio, I would probably get rid of the lamp, but you know, it's also my living room, so I 
need that at night to read, so <laughs> it's staying. All right, so uh, I'm going to cut right here. Now, I use Apple B, which is the way you cut on iMovie, and I don't need these two clips. Gone. There we go. And I'm going to go through the whole video this way. Then I'm going to come back and I'm going to have to decide, okay, where do I want to do a cutaway? Where do I want to have my face? So I'll have to do that. Then I have to come back, where do I need to write in subtitles? I need to do my introductory screen. I need to uh, credit screen. Or no, what is it? Title screen. Wow. Uh, I'm, maybe I need to insert a few photographs. Although with this new format with the document camera, I'm not doing as many photographs. But there's probably a need to fit, fit, fit a few of those in. Um, and then, of course, your final look through it. But you would be amazed if you actually look at professional films, not squirrels reviewing fountain pens, but actual professional films, how much footage ends up on the cutting room floor. You know, they do retakes. I don't do too many retakes because this isn't that kind of a channel. Um, they cut out, oh, that's a great scene, but guy, golly, this movie's getting long. That's why they have director's cuts. So a lot of editing goes on. And I would invite you, if you do videos, edit. If you want to see a video that needs some editing, look at my hail video that I recently put up. Needs should have been edited a lot more. There's no reason for that to be 18 minutes long. So I am now going to cut, and we I'll uh, come back, and we'll talk about the next part. Now, you'll recall that I uh, had about, what, 10 minutes, 39 seconds as my length of the video. I have now edited this down to 7 minutes, 16 seconds. And that's still over my 5-minute limit, but let me tell you what I'm going to be able to do. I have a big 1-minute, 4-second block here that's writing sample. Now, I'm going to, let's see, I usually like one word written at normal speed, even though I have more normal speed writing. I like that. So we'll, pause, we'll do this, we'll, we'll split it there, and then go down here. I like one word at the end at normal speed. So split it there, that will be. And then I'm going to speed this up. So speed, I do it fairly fast just because a lot of people a lot of people just don't want to watch me write a whole big long quote, so that's what I do. And there it is. Now that's sped up. Next thing I'm going to have to do, so see now that brought it down to 6 minutes 12 seconds, which means I could probably go in and edit some more, uh, but I'll tell you what, this is a revisit, so I'm actually talking about experience with this pen, so I don't mind that it's a little bit over. And I'll add about five minutes of title screen. So this will be a six minute, 17 second video, which is longer than I like, but it's something I'm just going to have to live with. Now the next thing I'm going to have to do, uh, you'll notice that the audio is still in the writing sample. I didn't mean to keep that. So I'm going to real quick select all my writing samples. I'm going to do uh, modify, uh, let's see, mute audio. I very rarely actually need that video. It doesn't pick up the writing sound, so I figure why keep it. All right, so next thing I'm going to do is you want to see my pretty face. So I'm going to go through and do my cutaways. Now I'll show you with just this bit here. I probably want to show my face when I introduce the pen. And as you can see, there's not a lot there to see. So let's do this. Let's give me about, I don't know, few seconds with just my pretty face. We'll crop that. And I'm just going to chop this bit out. Okay, now you see me. But wouldn't it be nice to see that? But, you know, I don't want it covering up my face because, you know, I'm making the effort to set up a tripod and do a good picture in picture. So let's do a picture in picture. Now that's small. We'll make it a little bigger. Nice writing sample. Oh, not too big. There we go. Probably could have zoomed in more, but it is what it is. Now you can see how I do cutaways. So then, when you're watching, you will see my cutaway appears. 
So I'm going to be going through this whole thing and deciding where do I cut, how do I do what kind of cutaways, where do I want just my face, where do I want just the writing, uh, where do I want to slip in some titles. And I know with the writing, or I'm sorry, with the pen size, I will be slipping in some titles. Uh, I also know I need to slip a title in here. So that's the next thing I'm going to work on is I'm going to do all my cutaways. Then I will come back, slip in some photographs, and slip in some subtitles, so I'll show you how that's done next. Now what I used to do is insert a lot of cutaways that were photographs. Now, of course, the photographs are all basically on my uh, blog, and I just insert cutaways of, of photographs if I just need to point out something. But, interestingly, as I'm filming this right now, Anderson Penn is looking for a product photographer. Now, I will concede that probably product photography for Anderson Penn does not pay as well as teaching in North Dakota, especially if you've been teaching as long as I have. But uh, if you're interested in that, it's, it, product photography is an interesting challenge. Uh, I don't have a nice little white, or I should call it a light box like a lot of people should, and I would assume Anderson Penn does. So then you can control the lighting on your product. I rely on morning sunlight to give good contrast uh, and good highlights and such. And I've been using my iPad. If I had a good macro lens for my Canon uh, 5D Mark II, I would definitely use that to do these photographs. But, you know, for the moment, that's what I have. And so I always take more photographs than I need. You never know when they'll be out of focus or when you'll need, you know, something will go wrong. So I always take a bunch of photographs and then edit down. That's what you're looking at aperture here. Uh, which is discontinued software, darn it. But, you know, that's a big part of my photography is editing things down, just like my video. I edited a bunch off of my video. When I take photographs, I edit photographs. I mean, we have basketball games here. We have, because I do a lot of high school sports photography and activities photography and some landscape photography, and you've seen some of my rodeo photography. I save the best. So I am going to, my next process here is going to be, uh, I don't really want to show you kids' faces there. Uh, I, I, I want to edit down my photographs, but you know, I like them to be fairly level, fairly centered. So of these two, this one's gone. This is the keeper. Uh, ideally, I'd probably crop it down. Well, what the heck, let's crop it anyway. So we'll do a nice standard uh, do not constrain. Uh, we'll, we'll crop this guy down, but the, make the pen the star. Uh, if I need to, I... Oh, I, I really like that shadow. <laughs> it adds absolutely no information, but I love the shadow, so I'm going to keep it. All right, so cropped. Uh, here, we, we have... Some, now, see, obviously I'm not going to keep that one. Whoops, Apple delete. Uh, so of these two, which one do I like better? Well, they're both about the same. But uh, this one is a little blurrier, so I'm going to get rid of it. This one's a little further away, so I'll get rid of it. Uh, this just shows a nice slip and seal mechanism. So again, we'll crop to the part that's of interest. And you notice how I very carefully have the shadows going so they're not really interfering, but they add some texture to the picture, and you have some highlights to add texture to the picture. And dust. You know, if I was a professional photographer, I would have very carefully dusted this pen off, cleaned off all the fingerprints, although this is a used pen for several years, so it's not going to look perfect. Photo the converter and the... So which one do I like better? Well, let's go through them all. I think... What's the point of interest here? The point of interest is the faceting and the converter in the barrel. This one's a little blurry. Oops. This one... Well, I think I'm going to rotate the picture. Let's level the picture. I don't know what my intent was in taking this picture, but now my intent in keeping this picture is to show the facets in the barrel. So I've leveled it a little bit to the horizon. Uh, now we're going to crop. Oops, it won't let me crop. There we go. So cropping going on. Uh, if, depending on your use for the photograph, you may wish to stay with standard sizes. Now, these are all going to end up in my blog or the video. I'm not going to sell these. 
So I don't care if they're not standard size, but that is something to keep in mind. I once took an amazing photograph of a kid making a basket. Uh, now I happened to live next door to his grandparents, so I made a big print of it, a big one that they could put up as a poster in their house. And the trouble was, it was not a standard size. So then I had to go in with my scissors and carefully cut it so it would fit. And of course, then they couldn't find a frame for it. And you know, what a pain. So uh, it, think about your use for the photograph. Uh, and that's a lesson that go, kind of goes beyond this. Now here, which one do I want? Do I want to show the pen uncapped? That's a really pathetic picture of an uncapped pen. Or do I want to do a close-up of the the grip and the nib. Well, I guess we'll do a close-up of the grip and the nib. But anyway, think about your use for the picture. Uh, if, if it's going to possibly be used as a print, go with the standard size. If it is not going to be used that way, then who cares? Uh, then, then you can focus on what's actually interesting. I uh, don't know how to make any plainer than that. This one, I, I would say the point here is the grip and the nib, so let's focus on just the grip and the nib. Now, if I had focused on that to begin with, I wouldn't have to do so much cropping, and I wouldn't have to do so much editing. So the best thing to do, best editing is what you do in your camera, uh, composing your picture properly. And obviously, I didn't do such a hot job here. Um, it's much faster to edit in camera. Then all you're doing post-processing is just saying, oh, which one do I like better? Okay, now what's, what is the best picture here? These are all too close. Like this, I don't want it because it doesn't show the whole pen. Uh, blurry. Now this shows more of the pen. So I think that's what I really want to show here. Creative decision. Um, there we go. So, obviously not level with the horizon in the background, but you know what? When I crop here... And by the way, you're asking, why do I have the whole pen in the background? I'll tell you the, the reason. This wanted to roll away. So the cap is in the very back there to keep it from rolling away. That's why. <laughs> Alright. Here we're looking at... Actually, I find that a neat view of the pen. Not so uh, useful but neat. It's not going to be in the video, but it will be in the blog. And I love how the light shines through this pen, so yeah, there's a reason to keep it. There we go. Apply. And it's the same picture. Ooh! Now this, in the review, you'll see I make a remark about the injection molding. This shows it. Also, this really shows off the cool blue color of the pen. I mean, that's what I love to show you, is the blue right as the blue uh, um, acrylic. Uh, not doing. So. Now, I've taken this picture before, so I don't need another one. Now here we get to size comparisons. I always take several. I tried to always use the same uh, Noodler's pen. I don't know why I don't always, but it is what it is. Uh, this is nice photograph to take because I always give my measurements in the review in metric, but uh, some people prefer the U.S. system. I don't. I wish the U.S. would go metric, but I'm not in charge yet. When I become dictator for life, the U.S. will be all metric. Okay, so these aren't as in focus as I'd like. I probably should have done better lighting. Like I, I wish I had turned this 90 degrees to how I took it with the lighting, but... I'm never real thrilled with these pictures anyway. And again, their point, the whole reason I take them, is just to show how long the pen is. You know, I say it, I post it, I hold the pen up, but this way you can decide for yourself how big the pen is. So I wish I could, I could do these pictures over, but I have a review coming up. And sometimes we let the perfect be the enemy of the good. And in this case, what's more important? I want the review up on time. I always try for a Thursday. So now I'm going to import all these pictures. Actually, I'm only going to import the length pictures because I think there's enough close-ups now that I'm using a document camera. 
that you don't need the photographs. They'll go in my blog, but these uh, length pictures, however many of those, three of them, are all going to, oh, I never cropped. Uh, these are what's going to go in my blog, or I'm sorry, in my video. Uh, I may slip, if I have a nice photograph here of the pen, I may slip that in to the end of the video uh, as a cutaway, but we'll see. All right, so we'll talk to you in just a bit. Well, I've now imported a few pictures. Move the computer here. I've now imported a few pictures that I can insert, uh, either as cutaways or picture in picture, like what you see here. And by the way, I've also shaved off a few more seconds. I'm down to six minutes and one second. I'll add about five seconds when I put the title in. But let me just show you uh, at the end here how I would insert pictures. So first of all, I have 21.2 seconds to play with here. And, you know, what information is being added by leaving that writing sample up? I can't think of it. So let's get rid of that. Wouldn't it be nice maybe, uh, let's look at the pen. So I'm going to drag the picture down. I'm going to insert it here. And you'll notice it's in here as a cutaway. I could do a cutaway, but check out something else. See how the picture moves? Now if I go to my uh, style, that's what's called a Ken Burns setting, and that's a way to make something made with uh, still pictures a little more interesting because they're not static. Uh, now what if I do a uh, fit? Okay, we see the whole pen, but you know what? Let's look at my pretty face while I do that. So picture in picture. Small. Let's make it bigger. Not too big. I don't want to stab myself with a pen. Now that's not bad. We can see the pen. Uh, just for giggles and snorts, let's see how that works if I do the Ken Burns effect. Eh, I don't know. Too much motion, I think. We'll just go with a straightforward fit. Now, uh, might also be interesting to slip in a few close-ups. Let's do a close-up of uh, this. Now, Ken Burns again. I can adjust my starting and ending point with the Ken Burns. I, uh, maybe I'd like to focus more on that injection. Center it so it ends right on the injection. Maybe. Let's see how that looks. Oh, and it's a cutaway. Guess what? <laughs> Picture in picture. So we'll make it big again. Now you put too much motion beside me and that's distracting. Which is why they often do it just do a still picture there. But let's let's just leave it. Uh, let's throw in a close up. Now it wants it eight seconds again. I don't have to go eight seconds, I think four seconds. Four point two. Let's compromise. Uh, cut away, no. We're going to do picture in picture again. have to select it before I can edit its size. I think the cap is neat, so that's why I want this here. But you know what? Let's not do that. Let's instead just do a fit. Then it's a regular still picture. Uh, and uh, let's finish off with a close-up of the nib. Ooh, that goes past the end of the video, so let's cut her back. 5.5 seconds. Uh, let's adjust a little bit to Ken Burns. I'm going to flip around. Actually, I like where it ends. Start. I'm going to put over top. So here's the change I'm going to make. With my end, I'm going to focus on the nib. This will be subtle. See? And of course, we're not going to do a cutaway, we're going to do picture in picture. Now I'm going to take a short break here. I'm going to insert my uh, length pictures. Uh, same way, except those are just static pictures uh, that'll be cutaways. 
and then I will be back to show you how to do the title and the sound. So now I've inserted all my cutaways that I plan. Uh, the only thing I have left are some titles and some music. Now I'll just point out, you can do some transitions. I do not use that many transitions. Too many are just distracting and gimmicky. Uh, there's a lot of different backgrounds you can use. I don't use them except on the title. Uh, lots of different titles and special effects you can do. I do not. There's actually a lot of visual effects you can do with the software. All kinds of audio you can do. I do not use copyrighted music because well, I don't want my videos in trouble with copyright. Uh, some people do. You'll see them on YouTube. I do not. I use Apple's whatever it is. Alright, so I like my title to last about as long as what you're seeing. So I'm just dragging this lower and I'm going to lengthen it, lengthen it, so it matches the clip. If it goes a little past the clip, that's okay. And, capped, 14 centimeters. Uh, I uh, don't do real exact measurements because I found pens do vary. So if you're into significant figures, that's why I'm not writing 14.0 centimeters, because I'm pretty sure it's not exactly 14.0. Or I should say the beginning. I'm going to add a background in here. I usually like my background about five seconds long. So a little longer than this. Five seconds. I like this retro one. I just think that one looks kind of nifty. Uh, and then I use focus for my title. And if the title washes over me a little bit, that's okay. That helps with the transition. Not too far over me, but a little ways is okay. So the title, I keep them simple. I should probably put my name in them, but I haven't. So I'm going to do the Platinum 3776 Shoji. And I always like to do the nib size. And I found that this doesn't show up well in white, so I changed the color to sort of an off-black. Usually either tungsten or lead. Let's go with tungsten this time, just for something different. So then, there we go. We have a title. I, the only thing missing is music. Audio. So I like Lazy Day. It's a 31 second video. Uh, there's others I use for other things. And there's a bunch here I've never used. Uh, you might recognize some Goulet Pens music there. Uh, and from some other fountain pen reviewers. And some don't do music at all. Uh, I usually drop the audio down to around somewhere between six to eight uh, percent. If, if it's higher than that it washes out my voice and it, the volume matches my voice better this way anyway. So then you have easy preview. So what I do, um, I usually watch the video through one time just to make sure do I have a typo in any captions, anything I want to change yet, any more editing to do, and so on. And then once I'm finally satisfied, first thing I'll do is I'll export a title card. So share image. Now I'll tell you why. It's just been found on YouTube. So Shoji title. It's been found on YouTube that if you put uh, an actual title card instead of a random clip from the video that YouTube selects who knows how, you get more views. I don't make any money off this, but who knows, someday I might feel like making money. So uh, that's what I do. Now uh, then I export the video. See, we're successful. Close. And then I will uh, export the video. Now I usually export a little higher quality. I guess I don't have to. But uh, the way I look at it is... Now see, if I go with best, 5.44 gigabytes. Uh, if I go with merely high, 9.27 megabytes. Now, I will probably start uploading this Wednesday night, and then by Thursday morning it's done. So, I don't mind doing higher because, you know, if, if you have a slower internet connection, YouTube does adjust it. So, if I had more available, I would go even higher. Yeah, honestly, because YouTube makes those adjustments. So, I hope this was useful. This is more for me, so I remember what the video is. Uh, hope I gave you an idea how I do reviews. And remember, I got my start 
just doing plain old ordinary simple iPad and I built up from there and you know there's some reviewers with more impressive equipment than I have some with less impressive uh, and the main thing I get out of this is I've just learned how to talk and I've learned how to present myself uh, and I much more conscious of how I appear to others so I've got and I've learned a lot about videography so I think this has been a very worthwhile thing for me well outside the pen world and I would encourage you to record videos on things even if it's not fountain pens things of interest to you so I thank you for watching we'll see you later